Hey everyone, my name is Mandor Chen, and we're excited to talk to you today about the store of the future. I am the PM working on the Intune store integration, and I'm excited to talk to you about how we were able to bring multiple technologies together to truly deliver a world-class experience in app delivery from the Microsoft store. Well, my counterpart is Roy, and I'll let him introduce himself. Hey, I'm Roy McLaughlin. Uh, I'm the program manager who is working on the Windows Package Manager and Package Manager client. And we are very excited today to talk to you about all of the great information of how we built this product and brought it all together so that you can then go and take this information and make the best use of it. Well, before we talk about the future, let's talk about the past, specifically the Microsoft Store uh, for Business deprecation. We realize that Microsoft Store for Business is not the enterprise solution that a lot of our customers are looking for. It has limited apps and content. The app discovery and acquisition experience is painful and there's no API support. It also lacks a lot of the business features that our enterprise customers are looking for, like grouping and targeting, supersedence, company portal app uninstall, and the different assignment types that Intune currently offers. As part of our Winget Intune integration, our goal is to address a lot of the problems that we just mentioned. We want to provide a vastly expanded catalog of apps, including an enhanced Microsoft Store app that would include both EWP and Win32. We want there to be rich API access to enable discovery, creation, and deployment of apps to Windows clients. We also want there to be a deep integration with Intune so that our enterprise customers get the control that they need. Additionally, in the future, we want to add both manual and all update capabilities so that customers can keep their app up to date when they want and how they want. We also want there to be great synergy between the different app sources, which also includes private shelf apps and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a future slide. Here's a slide that talks about the high level flow of what we just talked about. So starting from the top, we have Intune. So on the left side, you see the Intune portal and on the right side, you see uh, the company portal. And in the middle, we see the Windows Package Manager framework, which Intune calls its APIs for. And so the goal of that is so that we can access the different app sources that exist out there. Currently, we have the Microsoft Store app source, which includes applications such as Teams, Edge, Adobe, Whiteboard, WinZip, 7-Zip, and more. And on the right side, we have the private repository, the private app source, which contains applications such as in-house LOB, privately developed apps, ISC apps for a specific company. And this is how the whole integration works as a whole. To summarize, the Windows Package Manager's integration with Intune um, aims to achieve a couple of different things. So first, we call the Winget APIs so that we could retrieve apps from different app sources, right? That includes Microsoft Store, Private Repo that we just mentioned. Second, we call the Winget APIs so that we can search and discover applications that are inside these different app sources. Third, we pull app package metadata to pre-populate fields and configurations inside Intune so that the Intune admin doesn't have to do that themselves. And finally, we call the Wing API so that we can deploy and update applications with the three different assignment types that we offer, which includes required, available, and uninstall. And now I'll hand it off to Roy to talk a little bit more about the Windows Package Manager. Thanks, Mandar. And I just want to make sure I reiterate, going back to an earlier slide that Mandar was talking about on this one here, where the Windows Package Manager truly sits in between the Microsoft Store and the private repositories, as well as that Intune interface, so that we can, we're their bridge between the two. And so when we look at this, we have the Windows Package Manager client, or Winget. This is the Microsoft's Package Manager. And it allows us to install, upgrade, and uninstall applications that are on your device through the use of the command line interface. By running the simple command of winget install microsoft.visualstudio.code, your computer will install the latest version of the Microsoft Visual Studio Code directly to your machine from the internet. Similarly, you can use the Windows Package Manager to upgrade 
your applications using a very similar command, which is just winget upgrade. Uh, so how does this work? Well, in the background, the Windows Package Manager connects to a series of different sources. Uh, by default, the Windows Package Manager connects to both the Microsoft Store and the WinGet Community Repository. Both of these sources contain a curated list of applications that can be installed on your computer using the Windows Package Manager. The user or the administrator of the device can add or remove repositories on that device. So even though we have a default set of sources, it's not a consistent and it can be added and removed to and from. Well, let's start talking about the first one, the Microsoft Store repository or Microsoft Star Store source. The Microsoft Store store has a built-in front end layer that communicates with the Windows Package Manager solution, converting the information in the store into a readable format that can be consumed by the Windows Package Manager client providing us access to all the applications that are currently in the store today that have gone through a rigorous validation and security scan before being presented to us, the Windows Package Manager client, and to you, the user. Next is the Windows Package Manager Community Repository or Community Source. This is another source that is used by the Windows Package Manager as a curated list that is generated and populated by our community users. Those package manager community connects into our GitHub repository and submits new package manifests to identify an application, its version, as well as how to install it, among other details. And then it gets submitted to our GitHub repository. But before it's available to you, the user, Microsoft, us, we go through a very rigorous security scan of both the manifest file that's been submitted as well as the installer that's being used. We then generate a hash that says this installer has been certified or validated by our scans and protection so that now when you retrieve it on your Windows Package Manager client, it will do a hash validation to ensure that you're only gaining access to what we have verified as safe and secure for your consumption. Finally is the REST source. This here is an option for enterprise customers to stand up on their own and host their own curated list of applications. So now you as an enterprise can stand this up inside your Azure tenant and then host your own applications in any way, shape or form. And when I say this, I mean, you could host the content in say an Azure storage account. You could host this on different servers or file shares or even an IIS website, allowing you to then add in your own custom URLs and allow the Windows Package Manager client to connect to and pull from. So now you can control what your users have the ability to install or even upgrade to, giving you full control of what your users have access to. Now, it's not just the wild, wild west out there. What we've gone and done is we've built up a set of group policies that you can use within your environment. And so as an IT administrator interested in managing this, you can go to our website, our GitHub repository, https colon whack whack aka dot ms whack winget dash CLI. And in there, access our GitHub releases, and you'll see that we have a file labeled desktop app installer policies.zip. If you download and extract this, you'll find the ADMX templates required to bring this into your client devices. One of the key items here to look at is in that list, we have the ability to allow what can be accessed as a source, as well as what is configured as a source meaning you can set a true allow list of different sources that your users can connect to, but not put them on the device, just create an allowance for it. Second is the ability to actually configure it. So you can add to your source list or you can remove those default items. So now your users can't access, say, the community repository or can't access the store, or they can access both as well as your private REST source. And now back to Mandar, where he's going to show you a demo of the Intune portal. Thanks, Roy. We're here in the Intune portal right now. And you can see this is the main page um, for the admin center. And so what we're looking for here is if you go into the app section and you click open all apps, here is a view of all the applications that live within your admin center. And we decided as part of this integration to add a new app type called the Microsoft Store Repository. And so this signifies the app source that we want to pull from WinGet. 
all of the Windows Package Manager technology is kind of abstracted away and working in the background so that this integration works seamlessly. If you click open the Microsoft Store repository and hit select, you're taken to the app creation workflow that a lot of our admins are already familiar with. And here we built in the search uh, capability so that our admins could search the Microsoft Store repository for applications that they'd like. And so in terms of what we want to search, let's search the app company portal. And I know this app, a lot of our admins want to deploy anyways. And so if we click select, what happens here is that we call the Winget API to first retrieve the app package uh, from um, the source and retrieve a lot of the metadata that exists within the app package. Right. We use that information to pre-populate a lot of the different fields, such as name, description, publisher, package ID, um, and more. Things like privacy URL. And in the future, we plan to add uh, and import more configurations from um, the Winget API that we call. There are a couple of different fields here that don't really have anything properly into it. And a lot of these fields are uh, based on com company portal um, fields that uh, that are in more Intune specific. And so these are fields that we do need the admins to populate themselves. And once we're happy with the configuration that we have, let's click next. Here we're taken to the assignments page where you can see the three different assignments that are offered to the admin today, which is the required, available, and uninstall. If you choose the require assignment type, the application gets deployed directly to the device. It, but if you were to choose the available for enrolled devices, what happens is the uh, application gets deployed to the company portal and the end user has an option to install the app from the company portal if they like. And finally, you have the uninstall uh, um, assignment, which uninstalls the application. And so let's deploy this as required app to all devices. Here you can see the different configurations that we offer for each of the assignment types. We have things such as filters, filter mode, end user notification, installation deadline, restart grace period, um, and also you can configure the group mode as well. Once we're happy with our assignments, let's click next. Finally, we have the review and create page where the admin could review all the information and the configurations that they've made uh, when they created this application. So at the top, you could see the app information pages and these are all pre-populated um, info um, that we pulled. And in the bottom, you could see the assignment section and you could see that under required, you can see all the different that we decided to deploy to all devices with no filter and to show all the toast notification. So once we're happy with this um, page and we can now create the app. Awesome, now the application is created and we're in back to the admin center um, app view again. And we have built in a lot of the capabilities around reporting as well. So once this application gets deployed to your devices, you could see the different device status and user install status as well, um, so that customers could get accurate reporting on how their application deployment is doing. And that concludes the end of the, um, the, the demo within the Intune Admin Center. I'll hand it back to Roy. Thanks, Mendar. I am happy to get started here now. Jumping back to the Windows Package Manager, we can do some more command line integration with our store to see the exact same application that Mandar had shared with you earlier. So from the command line, I can type in winget search and then look up company portal. And what I'll see as a result is a search that's being done against all the sources that the Windows Package Manager client has access to. And if you remember, we had two defaults, the Microsoft Store and the Community Repository. And so once I get this result back, what we'll see is I'll have one entry, which is representative of the company portal in the Microsoft Store. And the way we can find this out is once that data is there, we'll have a table of information that includes the name of the application, its ID. If a version has been listed, it'll show the version, as well as the source that is sharing this application. And so we'll see our name of our application is company portal. The ID is actually going to match exactly what Mandar's demo had showed you. 
So if you go back to the earlier time in this, in this video, you'll see that the IDs will match what you see in Intune. And that's because we're using the same Calm APIs in the back end to perform the search here as we are in the Intune portal. And I know this is coming from the store because I see that source in there is showing me MS store. And if you recall, we had MS store as one of those entries in there. Now I did mention as well earlier on that we can also do more than just search, we can install. And so in this case, I'm actually gonna install something different. I'm gonna go Winget install, and then I'm gonna instead do the Microsoft Visual Studio Code. And by running this Winget install of Visual Studio Code, I'm gonna first go through a validation check. It's gonna ask if I have any EULAs that I need to actually approve. And if I don't have any that need to be approved, it'll just pass that along to the next stage. We're just going to identify, I have the license, I have the EULA. Now go ahead and download this application. The downloading of an application is dependent on the client itself. I'm currently sitting on a wireless network, so the download's a little slower. Your experience might be a little faster. But once this download has completed, the install will kick off. And the install is going to be following guidance that is in the package manifest. Again, I mentioned it a little earlier, it has the guidance of the name, the ID, as well as the URI to the download for the installer, as well as how you install those parameters that get added into it. And so it's going to run that install with those parameters on my local machine to perform that actual installation of Visual Studio Code onto my device. Here we see the application is fully downloaded and it did that hash validation that I was mentioning earlier. And we see that because it says successfully verified installer hash. And just for reference from before, like I was saying, we go through a strict validation process on all the application files that are being presented to us, either from the store or via the community repositories. And so now we've validated that the hash that I retrieved as a client machine matches to what has been tested and validated against. And once that is successfully completed, we go through a typical silent install, but it's not always silent. It can be interactive. It can have a display. It's based on the parameters that are provided for the installation, as well as what the actual installer supports. So if the installer does support a completely silent install, it'll install successfully with no actual displays to the screen. If you're installing, say, Microsoft Visual Studio Enterprise, there is a few checkboxes that the user needs to specify. And so when we run that install from that application, we will have to go through and check off the individual bits that we want to have included to our install and then hit commit. And then that would also proceed to perform the installation. So once this install has fully completed, we'll see at the bottom here that the install was successful. And then we, as a user, will know that this has completed successfully. And that is the end of my demo. Thank you. Thank you for attending our technical takeoff, and we appreciate you listening and learning with us. If you have any questions or feedback on the Windows Package Manager or the Windows Package Manager REST source, please feel free to reach out to us on our GitHub pages at the links provided. We're really excited to see you guys try out this feature in Intune and deploy your first Microsoft Store repository app. We have a lot of exciting features lined up in the roadmap, so stay tuned. Thanks again for listening.